y doctor en Sistemas de Información y Tecnología por la Escuela de Ingeniería de la Universidad de Miño. Bueno, ha sido profesor o es profesor durante los últimos 19 años, eh, investigador, del, eh, ha sido director de e-learning en el Instituto de Ingeniería de Porto. Entre 1997 y 2000 ha sido de... Bueno, ha, ha trabajado en la Unidad de Educación de Distancia de la Universidad del Instituto Politécnico de Porto. Bueno, eh, y ha sido, eh, y actualmente es coordinador de un grupo de investigación de Graphics Interaction and Learning Technologies, eh, en el que está desarrollando su línea de investigadora. Nos va a presentar un trabajo, eh, su, su presentación gira en torno de, los, bueno, de las próximas actividades y de las iniciativas que va a tener el capítulo portugués, en el que, bueno, en el que ya en la reunión anterior habéis visto que, que estamos mmm, en coordinación y, y trabajando juntos ya desde, desde los últimos años. Carlos, cuando quieras. Gracias. Bueno, muchas gracias. Um, I'm, I'm going to do this in English, okay, so it's, it's a little bit more comfortable tone for me. So, the, um, first of all, I want to thank you, the, the Spanish chapter, for the invitation to be here. Um, uh, when, when the invitation came, I, I was not exactly sure what I could address in this uh, speech, so my idea was a little bit to combine what we are doing in the um, Portuguese chapter of the Education Society and also what we do for research. So, uh, finally, I decided to name the, the presentation as New Ideas for the Portuguese chapter of the, so uh, the Education Society. Which actually, I'm, I'm looking for new ideas coming from you more than presenting my own new ideas, okay? So I, I'm looking for your help in this process. So I'm just um, presenting our ugly faces of the, the Portuguese chapter. So myself as uh, president and José Salvador as past president and Teresa Restivo as Vice President, Rui Lopes from the ISCTE in Lisbon, also as Vice President, and Manuel Jericota as Secretary. So I think you know most of these people because we have been cooperating in the last few years, so you have been in touch with them and uh, with myself. So just a, a little bit of focus, so I'm not going into detail on this, but of course we are part of the IEEE, so um, we respect and we try to promote the, the mission and vision of the IEEE uh, to foster technological innovation and excellence for the benefit of humanity and to become an essential tool to the global technical community and to technical professionals everywhere. So this is, let's say, this is the scope of our performance and behavior in the, in the Portuguese chapter. And of course we are Related, we belong to the education society, so we also adhere to, to the mission and the vision of the education society. So we are part of this effort to promote, to advance, and to disseminate state-of-the-art scientific information and resources related to the education society. And everything that relates with theory and practice <coughs> of education and educational technology. So I have in the fortunate position. I am in the fortunate position of being um, as a practitioner, but also as a researcher on this area of educational technology. So that's a little bit why I'm trying to combine those things in the in these um, presentations, which I, I hope will be short. Okay, so leave some time for discussion. Uh, also, let's make this interactive. Okay, so uh, as I as I said, uh, I, I'm not here as a uh, lecturer, as a, a stand-up lecturer, I, I'm here to talk to you, with you, to, to discuss with you, so if you have any suggestions and comments, please do interrupt and tell me what you think. So, uh, as the way as we see it, uh, our role as a chapter of the Education Society basically covers these three aspects. So, of course, the education, which is fundamental, research on uh, education and educational technology, but also communication, collaboration, all the aspects that try or that allow us to um, give this information to the others, okay? Not only to our members, but to everyone that is interested in this uh, aspect. So we think that our, our mission as in the chapter must cover all these three aspects. 
Of course, we have uh, our own statements on what we think we can do in the chapter. Uh, we respect, again, the, what has been defined for the IEEE and the, the Educational Society. So, promote the advancement of theory and practice in electrical, electronical, and computer engineering. Create the means to distribute and disseminate relevant information. To collaborate in the organization of medium, large-scale events with educational training and research focus. So the idea here is not um, only to be limited to our own events, okay? So try to cooperate and collaborate with other institutions to organize middle, medium, large size events. We think that we end up getting more, um, people get to know better uh, our work if we are involved in uh, events with uh, more people that uh, present. But at the same time, we, we want to promote our own events that can be replicable in different locations, and also to create a social network for our members, trying to promote collaboration between our members. Um, also, as a, let's say, a side activity, which is not directly related with the Educational Society, we want and we have been cooperating with IEEE Portugal to start student branches in all engineering schools. Uh, there are already a few student branches. We are working with them, trying to get all the engineering schools with these student branches. To promote the Teachers in Service program and the Technical in English program in collaboration with the Educational Activities Board and also the IEEE Region 8. Promote the collaboration with other organizations in the scope of engineering education and to evaluate uh, something that is very important for us, uh, the, the, the way the engineering schools have been implementing and have been adhering to the Bologna paradigm. So this is our main, let's say, tasks that we have committed to. Just, just a short slide on show how we are organized. We have, uh, of course, the direction board, and we have uh, some groups that are related with uh, organizational functions namely one group for activities, promotion and dissemination, and uh, another group for relation with other entities and organizations. And finally, three technical groups on innovation and research in engineering education, and virtual and remote labs, and continuous education in engineering, which includes also um, <coughs> secondary education. That means uh, not considering um, uh, continuous education as starting only after the end of the university, okay? We think that it is important to start very early and start getting people, uh, getting younger students to be interested in sciences and technology. A few of these um, uh, tasks have been accomplished uh, together with the, the Spanish chapter okay, of the Education Society. For instance, the publishing of uh, TICAI, uh, of this uh, yearly book, uh, that collects the best conference papers uh, in Portugal and Spain and uh, South America. IEEE RITA, the, the, the journal. We cooperate also with the Spanish chapter. Activities in uh, some of the conferences that has, in, or has been taken, uh, that took place in Portugal or Spain, for instance, Fintedi, where I was invited to, to do a, a short uh, presentation, and uh, also the workshop that was organized conjointly with the Spanish chapter ISS in uh, Guimarães in September, and also CISTI 2011 that took place in Chaves, where we organized one workshop on educational innovation in engineering education. Another short, um, shorter uh, activities, for instance, a debate on uh, the reflection on Bologna implementation. This is, was supposed to, to, to take place last October, but we had to postpone it due to some logistic problems. It is something that is uh, quite important at the moment. Uh, I think that in Spain you are also going through the same process. I think we are a little bit in advance in this stage, so we have already all the, our education adjusted to the Bologna paradigm by now, and we are starting to see the effects of that, not only in schools, but also on uh, employment, so afterwards. Uh, so that's something that we really need to, to debate and discuss. 
We have signed a protocol with the Portuguese, education, uh, Portuguese Society for Engineering Education. Uh, again, in the idea that, uh, the main idea being that we cannot do these things alone. We must cooperate with other institutions and uh, we must profit from what uh, they have to offer us and offer them the best we have. Uh, and as part of this cooperation, we were involved in a workshop organized by the SPEA in uh, September in Lisbon. We will organize a technical workshop, so one of the smaller events in December in Lisbon, in uh, Iskte. We have started a newsletter and we have started also a Facebook group uh, with the idea of getting this social network between the members. I have to say that the Facebook group has been a uh, sort of disappointment, partly because not all the members of the chapter have Facebook accounts, so they were not very much interested, and it, it's difficult to keep a dynamic pace of this group, so we are mostly using it to get information uh, disseminated. So again, our idea of having a, a community, a social network, is, has to be improved. Uh, <clears throat> the, way, the way I see it, we are currently facing um, a few threats, and, and this is one of the main motives why I, I'm making this, this presentation. I already got some, some ideas from your activities report here in Spain, but um, I think we need more ideas, because um, as you can see, uh, well, it's public that our country is going through a, a major crisis, economical crisis. The situation is very, very difficult, in particular for public servants and university professors. So I would say this is a rough estimate that 90% of our members in our chapter are professors at public universities. Uh, in the, this year, public servants had a salary cut of 10%, so we got our salary cut by 10%. In, in particular, there is a, a special subsidy, which is the, what we call the 14th month, which is paid in November, which coincides with the, the renewal for the IEEE membership. So um, this subsidy was cut by 50% this year. So this means that uh, this money, which is sort of extra money that the teachers got in the November, which most of times was used to pay this membership, was cut in half. Okay. Next year, we already know that we'll have another salary cut, an extra one, on top of this one of 15%. So in total, we'll have in these two years a salary cut of 25%, plus inflation rates, plus taxes, and so on. So this means that uh, this kind of money that teachers and professors at universities had for the, the membership in the, the tri triple E and uh, in societies, but also, for instance, for registering in the Portuguese Engineers Association, for registering, for instance, in the Portuguese Society for Engineering Education, and all these memberships, so ACM, for instance, and so on. Most, people, most uh, professors will have to really think if they will still have money to uh, be members of IEEE and IEEE societies. And if they have money to be members of IEEE, they will look very carefully to the societies they will be enrolled in. Okay? And um, currently, most of our institutions, most of our universities already have um, um, agreements that allow teachers to, ex to access the IEEE Explorer and other I IEEE information and uh, IEEE conferences, proceedings, and so on through library protocols. So one of the advantages of being a member of the Education Society can be somehow, let's say, covered by other protocols. Another problem, another extra pro uh, problem is that, for instance, um, most um, participation in conferences, uh, registration in conferences and uh, travels and uh, other expenses to conferences uh, was coming from project funding and funding for research groups, which uh, has also been cut. Okay. So that means that there is less availability for 
participation in conferences. So this is not, let's say, the, the brightest scenario, but of course, we, we, what we have to find is solutions, okay? We, we, like we say in Portuguese, there is no, no good coming from crying over spilled milk. So what we must do is try to get solutions for this problem. And somehow, I think we have to increase the payback of membership. So people that are enrolled in the Education Society chapter must feel that what they are paying is not, um, cannot be uh, replaced by other sources of information. So the idea of getting a social community of practice is again on the, on the ground. So getting more information circulating, getting more information, more formation, more training to the people getting more events, and eventually getting a formal recognition of activities. And the formal here is paramount. I mean, uh, for career purposes, currently in Portugal, nobody does anything that is not formally recognized uh, somehow. Okay, so uh, conference proceedings must be published or indexed in the IEEE Explorer. Journals must have uh, in, must be indexed by some of the most common indexers. So this formal aspect must be explored. So whatever we do and whatever we invite people to do in the scope of our chapter must be formally recognized somehow. Something that is, comes straight from what I said before is that we don't really have a strong industrial connection and we must do that. We must reinforce our connection to the industry. And I think we can do this, this by developing and reinforcing continuous education, okay? Offering some forms of continuous education for industries. So making uh, more direct uh, possibilities for, for this edu continuous education. And of course, Reinforce existing links. Uh, we have very close connection to, with Spanish chapter. We have a very good connection with the SPE, and we try to get other institutionals uh, doing with us common events. So a few examples for next year. Uh, INMA already presented CISTI and the SEA AE. But we, also, we are also involved in uh, organizing the, not organizing, we are technically co-sponsoring the CS EDU. It's a conference that will take place in uh, Porto next year. Okay, going now for a little bit more of research. This is something that we'll try to get online next year. It, this is going to be the educational repository for the Portuguese chapter of the Education Society. So the idea will be to get sort of central point for our community of practice that allows to submit, to search and to retrieve learning objects or educational contents. And this will also be, let's say, the starting point for continuous education. Okay, so get a, a point where people can collect and retrieve educational information. And from those contents then create some formal forms of organizing uh, continuous education. So this, you, you can look at this as a, a let's say, a typical um, learning object repository where you can upload your contents, you can upload your objects, you can search for your objects if they are tagged with some metadata, and you can retrieve them if you think that they are uh, usable for your purposes, be it teaching or, or learning, although our, our main focus is on teaching, okay? We did this repository as a part of a PhD thesis and also as part of a research project that was sponsored by our National Foundation. Initially, we had this repository set up for our own institution, ESEP. But we think that we could and we should now expand the scope of the use of this repository for other engineering uh, <coughs> schools. Again, because um, producing this type of contents is very expensive and we must share it so that we can also reuse uh, objects from the others. So apart from the fact that this is, let's say, a, a typical um, educational object repository, um, 
what we think that if you look, for instance, at something like Merlot, I don't know if you ever use uh, Merlot, which is, um, let's say, the most common or most known learning object repository, it is still very difficult for you to go to one of these places and get a really useful learning object for yourself. Why? Because it's difficult to search with uh, some keywords and to find exactly what you want. When you find what you want, then it's not so easy to reuse it because you have to learn how to use it and then you, you must understand how to use with, uh, how, how to work with it and uh, then you must ex explain your students how to use it and so on. So it's not so easy. What we think is most of these um, repositories lack information. So the, the, the type of information that is provided currently is not enough. Okay. So the idea would be, or was, to um, get the learning objects with a profile metadata that was taken from uh, learning object metadata from IEEE, and have to this some semantic characterization and some pragmatic characterization. Mm -hmm. On the first aspect, or the first part, the semantic characterization, what we, we did was to add some uh, ontologies that would allow us to create a stronger search pattern, okay? So the idea, for instance, if you are looking for one word, that might be an ontology where that word is related with other words, and then your search can be on the specific subject, on the specific keyword that you mentioned, but also on all the keywords that there is a relation with, okay? So that allows you to get a better search and allows you to get better results. And we also did it for several languages, okay? So if you look for a keyword in a certain language, it can be translated uh, using the, um, uh, Google, the Google services. It can be translated into other languages and be looked and searched for. <clears throat> so we have a, a, a more or less complex pros procedure for selecting the ontologies, for uh, rank those ontologies, so I'm not going through that. But the idea is then, again, to get a stronger characterization of the objects. On the other side, we have um, pragmatic characterization. So the idea here is to use foxonomies. So uh, foxonomies will be a sort of um, popular or free taxonomy. That means that users of the system can characterize, can tag, resources. And these tags can be, for instance, um, related with content, which gives more information, again, on what has been um, approached by that uh, learning object, but can also be a sort of qualitative information on that learning object. For instance, if you take a learning object and you look at it and you think it's very interesting and you use it on your own classes, then you can go back to the server, or to the repository, and say, this is a very good resource, and you can use it for this, and this, and this, okay? And that means that the next person that goes there already has a reference to the quality of that resource. Of course, if you have only, let's say, five or 10 comments, statistically, is not very significant. So that's also why we want to enlarge this, to get more people cooperating, uh, more people submitting, uh, more people reusing uh, resources. This is not an easy thing to do, of course. We know it, because we as uh, university professors are very, uh, how can I say, very selfish in the way that we don't like normally very much to share the things that we do. We, we stick very much to our own production materials, but I think we have to start to think a little bit differently on this and uh, improve the, the way we share and uh, reuse resources. So actually this is going to be next year our main uh, focus to try to disseminate this repository and using it as basis for communication with members and other people of the society. So basically this is um, what I wanted to tell you. So I would like also to get some comments So what can we do to improve this state status Thank you very much, Carlos. We have a short time for one question. If you want to ask. I would like to, to ask you, Carlos, about this last initiative. Uh, do you have estimations about uh, which is 
the result that you plan to get about the repository learning of learning objects uh, from the viewpoint of the members of the chapter uh, about number of learning objects that you uh, I'm not very optimistic on this <laughs> in the next year yeah uh, this is normally a, a sort of uh, uh, exponential curve no so it's it's like a, the, the Rogers diagram for adoption of technology. So we have a, a, a grow, we grow like a exponentially. We start very slowly, mm -hmm. okay? And then if at a certain moment people realize that this is actually useful, then everyone starts to contribute and everyone starts to upload mm -hmm. resources. And uh, if that happens, then we might have a lot of uh, resources. And a lot, I mean, uh, we could get a few hundreds. Because when we talk about learning objects, then we can have uh, different things. We can have, for instance, let's say, a PowerPoint presentation. Very simple, static PowerPoint presentation. We can have, uh, of course, more complex things like animations or simulations. But uh, I think that uh, number of those things will be much less than the number of static learning objects. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Very, very interesting. Thanks. The, um, Thank you, Carlos. Okay.